Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about architects. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, how do architects who almost never code add value to a software engineering team? Right, I'm gonna try to not sound too condescending. Uh, they don't. Uh, that's not a hundred percent true, but it's my emotional, a uh, very, very emotional response to the frustration that I've had over the years working with architects, uh, who are, in my opinion, depending on how you look at it, they all because there is a there has been a transition, in my opinion, at the very least, of skill sets for the old time architect. It used to be a person who had system design training, whatever the hell that is. Uh, where the way that they do they have been doing their job for the longest time is basically just to conceptualize it's sort of honest to god guys i think that most of it has sort of it started as people mimicking what they saw in other industries like the roles and everything like that and more and more we're starting to learn uh, unlearn that a lot of the sort of traditional way of doing things uh, that we borrowed from other industries in order to establish the IT uh, industry uh, has it really is a bad idea and having a uh, an architect uh, get the old timey ones or the the ones that really don't like they're not involved they're not real software developers at the core of their education they are technically technical people who basically are well i'm not going to say solution architects because even by today's standards i think someone would want a little bit of uh, because there, there is a case for architects uh, and solution architects, etc., etc., where, but it basically comes down to that they usually have knowledge of ser of services, and it's usually in the cloud space. They usually have an understanding of different type of third-party software and their benefits, and so forth and so forth. But they don't actually know all that much of software development, and it, it there is always a range here. And I have I've interviewed many at this point uh, everything from engineering managers and uh, like up to like the architect level and so forth and so forth and it always comes back to the same thing where if you deal with an architect who doesn't really know how to ship software then this person is practically is practically just a glorified middle manager it's just yet another person who is going to get paid to uh, do almost nothing apart from writing documentation that's it that's all they're gonna do oh and facilitate meetings which is the vast majority of how uh, middle management in IT works this is the biggest truth that I can give you I actually was talking to my uh, product owner the other day about this I was saying because he was telling me that because he's extremely frustrated because he's deal he's been dealing a lot with this problem where he tries to get things moving tries to find people who can actually do something in a larger organization and he can't he can't find anyone who he can actually get to execute on things and I say no but the problem is that this is how traditional business work so the way and this is still going on today the 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 because what you don't understand is that the average worker the average person the it is the title and the role and the position that you hold that is the desire of the person who's going through the career so when you're dealing with the middle manager other middle managers they are not necessarily qualified to hold this position whatsoever they're pro and because their skill set, the only requirement they have on their skills is that they have the ability, the uh, all-powerful ability to facilitate a discussion. That's it. That is literally it. That is the only requirement that you need to have in order to make it within middle management, apart from, of course, knowing the lingo and so forth. And if you don't really understand what I'm saying, I'll explain it to you this way. The, have you ever considered how people from all kinds of backgrounds in politics can make it up and become politicians? How do they make any informed decisions about anything? 
Well, it's actually very simple. They don't have to have a background in any of the legislations or decisions that are making are going to happen. They have to learn that on the job, and they and just incidentally have budgets that they can allocate and staff that they can tell to go and learn things for them or present them with summaries and expl explain things. They're basically paying other people to tell them what's how to do, how things work, so that they can form usually a very and <laughs> a very shallow opinion on the thing that they're dealing with. This is what the average architect does. The av and the, the average middle manager does the same thing and product owners etc etc. Most people who manage any uh, manage in IT have no real understanding of IT. It is very very common that you find people who have I mean if you'd ask the average architect to go and b sit down with the software developers and build things they will not be able to do it that's going away more and more but it's still a reality they will not be able to do it because the way that they usually perform thing in their job is as I said they have some relevant skill somewhere that may not necessarily be value building anymore or maybe it never was because I still to this day have never found a uh, so an architect that had more value to the company than a senior software developer because it's actually not that difficult to do the work of an architect when you have the experience needed to do that work. It, that's why I tell people that in my opinion the architect should be the highest level in like the engineering department. There should be no way to educate yourself to become an architect. It is a badge of it should be a badge of honor where you have worked to the point where your mastership of software development is so high that you can teach other people to work better when you are reaching when you are at that level that's when you should be an architect but as with the as I was telling my pro product owner that's not how the higher management roles work what how it works is as i said if you if you don't know things if you like all you really have to know is how to schedule a meeting all you have to know is how is to you need to have the social skills to maneuver a situation because what happens is the same thing that the product owner is doing when they don't know something how do they fix all their problems well they they find a software developer who knows something and then they ask them to be in the meeting as well and they for if they offload the responsibility of knowing how to solve the digital systems and like all that stuff onto that person that is that's standard management that is exactly what the manager does you move you try to con quote unquote connect people and facilitate discussions and unless you haven't thought about that literally anyone can do that literally you ha if you have a vague understanding of w the project or what's going on and so forth anyone can pick up a phone or start a like a instant messaging uh, application and start talking to people and asking ask to see if you can figure out is there a person here who can help us with this problem and then facilitate a discussion that is in essence what the architect is doing because as i was saying unless they have strong understanding a strong understanding of a pretty wide range of uh, tools and topics and skills and so forth it's actually very difficult to provide any value as an architect you can absolutely conceptualize you can absolutely and I see this, this is what they usually do as I said they can absolutely sit there and draw boxes between systems and so forth and so forth but the reason why we're going away from that is because we continuously see that that planning that 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 way of working is actually not it's it's not giving the sort of benefits that you can gain from actually having architects who know tools coding etc etc because as i said a senior software developer can also sit down and draw boxes on uh, on a flow chart it's not a complicated topic and facilitate discussions and all that stuff anybody can do that you can literally have anyone in the management in a management position do the exact same thing and the thing that lacks usually is execution and an architect who cannot help a team execute is a useless individual in my opinion
So what I want you to take away from this is that the, the way that they usually add value to a t team is that they facilitate discussions. And my press, I've made my, I'm wearing my opinions on my sleeve or whatever, I wear my heart on my sleeve. A, I don't believe uh, at all, and it's continuously shown to me that people even ask me, do you have architects? Because when you have a bad architect, as I said, an individual who doesn't actually know how, how to execute on stuff, he, they are not doers, they are talkers, then nothing can get done. Like they can, they can actually pretty much fuck up an entire project because their their way of doing something, they are put in a position where they have a responsibility to help guide the technical vision. But unless they know how to achieve the goals or anything like that, all they all they really are is a middleman between the stakeholders of the company and the people who are actually going to do the work. And the reason why that still is the way it is is because. In, as I've told my PO, it is because the like, and this is true for practically every company in the in the entire world. The way management works is that it is your role. The value of you as an individual has to do with your position. You don't actually always have to be qualified to hold a certain position because, as I said, the vast majority of management in the world, all the way up to the politicians, is not about being the informed person, being the senior, being the person who knows the most about the thing that you're doing, the thing that it is about is for your magical ability to facilitate discussions. That is what it comes down to. Product management, exact, all of this stuff comes down to exactly the same thing. Put the right people in the room and then pray and hope that you will find a solution by having a conversation. And that's why you talk endlessly because the responsibility of solving the problem is not yours it is whoever is considered the person who is supposed to execute the responsibility it's just that you have to pull them in and create a plan together which is as i said any one of these people like if you're talking to real senior if you have a senior software developer or something like that will be able to do that if given the if that requirement is put on them because if trust me if they can figure out how to become a master software developer or a senior software developer i promise you they can figure out how to draw a flow chart or how to explain to people what they want to build and for what reasons etc etc and an architect who does not have the ability to do like who almost never code will lose their ability to actually make these sorts of informed decisions. The only time I've seen that not being true is when the architect is usually a, a domain expert of some sort or knows like a tool suite or something like that. That's a whole different topic because the useful, just the way to, as I like to say with product owners, the useful quote unquote talkers or like people who are higher management are the people who really know how the systems work or really knows how the domain works, etc. So they have vast amounts of years of experience. They really, really have been around to the point where they may not know so much about coding, but they can answer the questions of practically anyone related to how the system works, how the, all the entities within the system works, or what tooling to use, etc., etc. But as I said, that's a big if. The average architect is, as I said, not necessarily a person who's going to add all that much value to the software engineering team, but that is changing. More and more companies are realizing that it is more beneficial for them to train senior software developers to take on those roles rather than hire someone who doesn't actually have a background in software engineering to do these sorts of things because it's always the case that when you don't know if you're a higher level, if you're a manager, if you don't know anything about the thing underneath, the only option for you is always facilitate discussions and have other people do the work for you. Yet you retain the role and power, even though you are not perhaps the most appropriate person to be in charge. Have a great day.